Hello, everybody. So, it's the coronavirus lockdown, and uh, you've decided you need to do something rather than just sit around uh, watching daytime TV. And you think, oh, I've got an old ukulele or guitar or something that's been gathering dust in the cupboard. I think I'll just learn me how to play that. So you go and you get it. And, um, and the first thing you've got to do is learn a few chords. So here I am, I've got my ukulele and uh, I see C. Yeah, just have to hold down one string, that's easy enough. That's a chord, and after a bit of struggling, you get G, F, and for long, you think, oh, well, that's good, let's try and sing a song. So you download something from the internet that's got all the chords nicely written up on top of the words, and you start singing and playing, and it's really cool. It's midnight special. Uh, excuse me for the singing, but you get the idea. And so you, you get pretty, pretty good at um, banging away the chords and getting a song out and you decide then you want to start playing with your mates, but you can't go out because it's a coronavirus lockdown. So you think, okay, I've learnt the Midnight Special. I'll I'll go on YouTube and play along with uh, somebody singing the Midnight Special. So you go on YouTube, download the Midnight Special, start singing and playing your guitar and it sounds horrible and you don't know what's wrong, what's going on? So you phone up your uh, guitar playing mate and he says, well, are you playing in the same key? And you say, what do you mean? Key. What's key? I'm just playing the notes like it told me when I downloaded it from the internet. The chords. I'm just playing those chords. What's the matter with it? And the, the, your, your friend says, well, you play songs in different keys and if you want to play along with somebody else, like in a jam session or something, and they're playing in a different key, then you've got to know how to transpose. Transpose, what does that mean? I tell you what, he says, go away, download the circle of fifths from the internet. Just Google it, Google's your friend, print it out and learn it. When you've learned the circle of fifths, then come back to me and we'll take it to the next stage. So I do what he says and I download the circle of fifths and print it out and oh my word, what is that? Somebody's just picked up a handful of chords and notes and thrown them at a piece of paper. What? How do I make any kind of sense of that? There's, there's sharps and flat signs and there's chords scattered all over the place and... Uh, uh, give up. Well, luckily, um, I've come up with a simplification of the circle of fifths. All you need is a 3D printer. And it just so happens that I happen to have a, um, a 3D printer to hand, so this wasn't a problem for me, but don't worry if you haven't got one. Just ring up your mate who's got a 3D printer and ask him to print out these these parts from which I'm going to show you in a second or two. Um, the design I put on Thingiverse. If you look for Chris Hornby on Thingiverse, uh, you'll see the design that I'm just about to describe for you. So the next couple of, uh, next few seconds of this video might only be of interest to people who've got 3D printers, so you can skip on if you like. These are the three parts that you need to print out. There's a, a base, a sort of sleeve thing, and there's a dial. Uh, that's the dial. Um, 
the the letters, the the chord uh, symbols. Um, you can print in a different color if you've got a two color printer. Uh, what I did is I just um, the the letters are raised, so I just coloured them in with a gold pen. So that's the dial. Then there's the case or sleeve. There, same thing applies to the lettering. It's in there. Oops, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Uh, that's the sleeve or um, casing, and that's the base. Right, assembly is quite easy. You just put the dial in the sleeve like that, and then the base, put it on the bottom and glue it. And there you are. You've got your circle of fifths machine that'll do everything that that complicated piece of paper I showed you and it will be much easier to understand. So let's go through the things that it offers you. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to film because um, the, the focus is it's difficult to maintain at this distance. Anyway, this is uh, my Circle of Fifth machine, which you'll see is a lot, lot simpler than that complicated diagram I showed you, but it actually manages to do at least 99.9% .9 of the things that that complicated diagram does. And I'll just try and show you a few of the ways that you can use it. So remember we played the Midnight Special in C. Uh, it was a C chord that we start with. Just hold down one string on the ukulele. Okay, so we're in C. You turn the dial until the C is next to where it says Major. And that is the key. C Major. Now if you look in the window it gives you all the the chords and the notes that you can play with in the key of C major. The ones that don't go in the key of C major are hidden behind here. If you look at the top, it's got C major and then it's got a fourth and a fifth. There's three chords there. Now, probably 90% of pop songs, folk songs, and so on. Um, even military marches and stuff like that. Just use those three chords. So if you're in the key of C, you just need to learn F and G. Remember, I played F and G and C. It's the midnight special F C. So, so but also um, there are minor chords that go along with. Uh, the major, and you know, if you want a little bit of um, sadness in your song, you stick a few, chuck a few minor um, chords in there, like Annie Laurie or something like that. And if you look along the side there, it says minor, and next to the minor is A. Now, A is the relative minor of C, A minor goes nice with C. And if you're playing a tune in A minor, then C goes nice with it. In actual fact, if you're playing in C, any of these notes, C, G, D, A, E, B, uh, D minor, A minor, E minor, are three minor chords that you can play nicely in the key of C. And even down there, just to maintain compatibility with that complicated chart that I saw you just now, uh, I showed you just now, is the diminished, the relative diminished. So you can play a B diminished chord nicely when you are in the key of C. So, if you're making up a song, or you're reading a song off a sheet from the internet, you'll find that if it's in any key, it'll only have the um, 
the cords that are in the window. That's it. Simple. Unless it's something really spaced out like one of those Beatles songs or something. You might have one or two chords that are hidden behind the barrier there. But it doesn't matter if you leave them out. They're just, they, they, they'll sound wrong, but they might have been put in there for some kind of effect or something. So that's all you need to know. Right, so now you're playing in C. You go down the pub. The lockdown's over. You want to play along with your mates. And you say, oh, we're going to do the midnight special. What key are you doing it in? And they say, oh, it's an E. All the blues songs are in E. You say, oh, well, I only know the chords in C. It's easy. What you do is you turn the dial until the E is up there at E major. And then you can see the chords that go along with E. Whoops, let's have that. Which are A and B. The B is sometimes um, uh, modified by on the seventh note and called B seventh. Um, uh, and the, the 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 fourth. So you were playing in um, in C. And if you remember in C, it was C, it was F, and it was remember G. So your F now becomes an A. So where you were playing in F, you now play an A. Your C becomes an E. And the G that you had, or the G7, becomes a B, or a B7. Easy. And if you want to throw in any minor chords, then those are the ones you, you can play. F sharp minor, well, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp minor. And if you want to... Um, put a diminished chord in there, it won't sound too awful as long as it's an E flat diminished. There you go. That's how you use it. Now there was some other stuff on there like how many sharps is there in a in, in, in a key, how many flats are there in a key and all that sort of thing. Well that's easily done with this as well. So let's go back to C. So we're in C major. There we go. If you count around the dial, C major has not got any sharps or flats. C major just plays on the white notes on a keyboard. The black notes are all the sharps and flats. So if we're in C, um, we've got all white notes. You'll see none of them have got a sharp or a flat. Uh, what was I doing? All oh, right, we, we're trying to work out how many sharps or flats there are in each case. So we, we, we count round. C major, there's none. So we start from C major. G is the next one in the circle. That has one sharp. Go to the next one in the circle, D, two sharps. Next one in the circle, A, three sharps. E, four sharps. B, five sharps. Okay? And that takes us right to the bottom. If we go in the reverse direction, turn it back, back round, from C, F has got one flat, B flat's got two flats, E flat's got three flats, C sharp, I put sharp because that's usually how people say it, but um, G sharp is, uh, is actually, uh, what is B, G sharp is uh, A, A flat, we don't say A flat, and so on. So you can go backwards around for flat and forwards around for Sharps. So C sharp, no flat, no 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 sharps, one flat, one flat is F, 
2 sharps is G. Have I explained that right? 3 sharp, 2 sharps is, sorry, 1 sharps G, 2 sharps D, 3 sharps A, 4 sharps E, 5 sharps B. You don't really need to know that, but that just fills in the last little bit of information that you would see from that really, really complicated circle of fifths. Um, and I can't think of anything else that's actually on that complicated circle of fifths that you can't actually do with this amazing circle of fifths machine. Now, I know some concert musician is going to come along and say, yeah, but it doesn't do this or it doesn't do that. We don't care. We're only starting out anyway. And we want to be able to understand what we do. Just go down the pub and start jamming. So thank you very much for watching my video. And I hope it's been of some, some um, interest to you. Uh, if you can't get one of these, it's possible you might be able to make one out of a piece of cardboard. Or um, there are some uh, agencies that print stuff out for you. Or if you grease my palm, I might even be able to print one out for you myself. So thank you very much. Bye. It's a midnight special. Shine a light on me. It's a midnight special. Shine your ever loving light on me. If we ever go to Houston, and you better watch out. And you better not stagger. And you better not shout, cause the sheriff's gonna arrest you.